This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. Hi, I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It's so great to have you joining me here in these online lessons. It's a Technique Tuesday, and in this Technique Tidbit lesson, we're going to work on some more scale patterns. So that's what we've been doing for the last several lessons, working on different types of patterns that you can do within scales that will help you develop your left-hand coordination, flexibility, strength, so dexterity, that sort of thing, coordination between the right and left hands. Now we did a lot of different types of interval skips, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, sevenths, and octaves. We looked at scale patterns where we were going with a certain number of steps. One, two, three, two, two, three. So going by thirds or fourths or fifths, ascending and ascending and descending. Now in the last lesson we looked at a different type of scale pattern that you could work. So starting to get some variety creating skips in certain places, that sort of thing. In this lesson, we're going to continue as a part two from that one, looking at lots of different variations. And really, I just want to open you up to the possibilities. Once you learn a mode or a scale, you can get inside of it by creating different patterns, and that can help you with your improvisation or melody creation and just coordination in general, which is why it's here on these Technique Tuesdays. It helps in all these different ways. And so, I have up here on the board the major scale form, sort of the most common major scale form that is used, and I've been using that one because it's a great place for us to work on some of these things. But you can apply this to any scale, any mode that you're working on, any scale form, anything, and it can help you you get inside of that scale more. So this is just the basic two octave major scale with an extra step, the seventh step below and the second step above. I've gone ahead and written in the step numbers and then the R with the squares around it is where our roots are, so step number one. And I've done that because in these types of scale patterns you're really looking for the step and where you're at inside the scale. So I've written that up there as a reference if you need that. But I'm going to do this, go ahead and do all the examples right there in B flat, meaning my middle finger is on that sixth fret on the sixth string. And I would have two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, two, four, one, two, four in the fingerings. And I come back down. So this is probably familiar, but it's up there as a reference. Now, if this is the first one you're jumping in on this first lesson here, you may want to check out some of the earlier scale options as well. So, we in the last lesson did this, this thing where we went step one to two and then skipped by a third and came back down. So four, three, and then went two, three, five, four, or flipped it and went the opposite way. So instead of going one, two, four, three, we started with four, three, and then one, two, and then five, four, two, three, and went through it that way. So in this lesson, as we continue on from there, a variation of that is to go ahead and do three steps at a time instead of two. So I have up here on the board, we would go step one, two, three, then five, four, three. So we're skipping by a third and then descending. So we go one, two, three, five, four, three. Then we continue on going two, three, four, six, five, four. We can continue with three, four, five, seven, five, uh, six, five, and then four, five, six, and then eight, a root, seven, six, and then five, six, seven, two, one, eight, and then six, seven, eight, up to three, two, one, then seven, eight, root, five, uh, four, three, two, and then eight, or one, root, root, two, three, five, four, three, two, three, four, and then six, five, four, three, four, five, seven, six, five, and then four, five, six, root, seven, six, and then five, six, seven, two, eight, root, seven. Now we've gone as high as we can in this particular form. So we start coming down. So we had just done five, six, seven, and then two, root, seven. So as we continue down, we're going to go back to four, five, six, and then root, seven, six, and then three, four, five, seven, six, five, two, three, four, six, Three, 
seven, uh, root two, and then four, three, two, six, seven, root, we'd have three, two, root, and then five, six, seven, two, root, seven, four, five, six, root, seven, six, and then three, four, five, seven, six, five, two, three, four, six, five, four, root, two, three, five, four, three, seven, two, uh, sorry, seven, root, two, and then four, three, two, and then we can just end there on the one. So just if I play through that without talking through it, so you can kind of just hear the example, we'd have reti and... Just like that. So, and that's another great one. Now, some ways that we can create more variation. We could start with five, four, three, and then do one, two, three. So come down first, descend by that, that interval of a third, and climb back up. So, five, four, three, one, two, three, six, five, four, two, three, seven and then the root and two root seven five six seven three and so on and so forth you could do that as a variation so and kind of have both of theirs. Here's some other ways to create variation. And before I go through these variations, I'll just mention you want to do these as slow as you need to to play them accurately and then build up speed over time. And that helps lock in our hands. Also, if you watch as I was doing some of these, there's going to be places where we do those finger rolls. And it's good to get those in there if they're comfortable. So instead of when you have a note in the same fret on a different string back to back, Two, if we're going to a higher string, then we the, we roll down, like middle finger will roll down. If we're coming to a lower string, then we start with a flattened out and roll up onto our tips. And so I did that throughout that first one here and there. As you do that, it can help with speed as you're doing these things rather than having to actually pick the finger up. But there are times, especially the wider the intervals get, where we do want to pick up those fingers. I've exemplified those things earlier, but I just thought I'd mention it. So some other ways to create variations with these types of things. And you just kind of use your imagination and get some and get some different ones happening. You try and trick yourself and you gain that technique happening. So we can skip by a fourth instead of a third. So that would mean going one, two, three, and then skipping up to six, five, four, two, three, four, seven, and then three, and skipping from that step five to that root, 
and so on. So you could skip by by a fourth, or you could skip by a fifth. So going one, two, three, and then seven, six, five, two, three, four, root. So we can just keep widening. We could skip by a six. One, two, three, and so, and then we'd have the root seven, six, two, three, four, and then you'd have. Two, seven, uh, eight, seven, two root seven, and so on. You could go skip by a seventh, skip by an octave, even get those wider skips in there. That would be a way to create variation. Of course, with those, you could flip them and do the reverse option first with all of those as well. With the uh, with this, you can also increase the number of steps that you're doing. So we could go four steps. One, two. Four, skip by a third and come back down. So one, two, three, four, six, five, four, three, two, three, four, five, seven. Just like that. And with these, then of course you could do all the different variations. Skip by wider, wider intervals in between the two stepwise little collections that you have. One, of course you could do five. One, two, three, four, five. And so on and so forth. So you could do sixes, sevens, eights, you could go as much as you want to, do a whole octave. A whole octave. And so on and so forth. Now we can create some more variations by adding more skips into the game. So down here at the bottom of the board I have an example where I'm doing the intervals of the third, so root three, two, four, then skip up a third and come back down. So six, five, four, three, so. And then you would continue with two, four, three, five, seven, six, five, four, three, five, four, six, root, seven, six, five, and so on. You could also switch those and do those in inverse. You can just use your imagination a little bit. So those are some ideas on more ways that you can kind of start getting inside of scale modes that helps you really master those, gain control both orally and hearing the intervals and the different pitches going both stepwise and with skips within a given mode or scale. And you can also gain that control with the left and right hands. So scale exercises, patterns like that can be really helpful. Help us get that improvisation happening more. It can help us just with the control of our hands for technique purposes only. And it can help us even if we were working note reading and so on. We get used to doing these different skips and these different, these different uh, gymnastics type moves with our hands. And that helps us when we're reading and playing written music that's already there. And it helps us like orally a little bit. So when we're transcribing, we've already kind of gotten inside of some of these scales with these types of things and heard these interval skips and know where they are. So it helps from a technique standpoint, nice foundational thing to be working on on the side when we're learning music. So super cool. So that kind of finishes a long series of different scale patterns that can help you out. That In the next lesson we're going to look at one more thing that has really helped me with developing my hands and that is working little classical pieces and so on with a pick. So this has really helped the coordination between the picking hand and the left hand. So we're going to do that for another Technique Tuesday lesson on this next one coming out. Of course there's a new theory and technique book, a new updated version that will soon be out. It's got all sorts of different exercises, lots of theory, fretboard theory, technique in various styles. And we'll have that coming. I got those Theory Thursday lessons on on Thursdays. We got jazz lessons on Mondays and Wednesdays right now and improv lessons for for pop, rock and blues on Saturdays. And then there's hundreds, over 900 lessons already on the channel that cover various things. So lots of help with guitar for you. Keep having fun, take care and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.